Those of you who follow my Facebook page or my YouTube channel have seen the Thursday First Communion and Confirmation that I posted of Emily, a 12-year-old quadriplegic young girl who cannot move her hands or her feet. She is totally bedridden. She lives her entire life in her bedroom, being cared for by her parents, especially her mother. She has a feeding tube. She's on oxygen. She weighs about 60 pounds. And she's so very well cared for. Her mother cannot leave her side at all because she keeps drowning in her mucus. So she has to suction with a pump the mucus constantly out of her lungs. Otherwise, she will get pneumonia and she would die. She's 12 years old. The woman afflicted with a bleeding issue has been going to seek help from doctors for 12 years. She has a bleeding issue. In the Bible, blood means life. In other words, for 12 years, she has had life being drained out of her. Each and every one of us has a bleeding issue. Something or someone drains you from your life. They're sucking or it sucks life out of you. And it sucks, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. To have life being sucked out of you through your problems, through depression, through anxiety, through your bills, through the gas prices, through the death of a loved one, through the cancer diagnosis, through dealing with drug-afflicted children. I could go on and on finding out your spouse is cheating. There are blood issues going on in each of our lives. This particular woman in the gospel reading today, she could, after she was cured, go home and return to her family. The real goal was to be healed. That's why there are two words used in the gospel reading. Cure and healing. Cure is a physical thing. Healing, biblically, has to do with restoration. When you are healed, you are restored to your family. You are restored to community. That's why any time somebody is cured of something like lepers, or in this case, you have uh, a woman with a bleeding issue, it allows her to be able to go back and enjoy life again. It allows her to quit existing and to start living because she is just existing like so many of us do. So many people today just exist. 
they don't live. And God wants you to live, and not just to live, but to enjoy life. In biblical times, if you had a hemorrhaging issue, particularly a woman who was bleeding, she was rendered impure, unclean, untouchable. Her husband could never touch her, ever, ever. Her children couldn't get close to her. She couldn't go to the marketplace. She couldn't brush her daughter's hair. She couldn't snuggle with her grandchildren. Do you understand the situation of this woman here? So Jesus cures her physical affliction to heal her emotional inside affliction. In biblical times, to be healed, you are reconnected. A bleeding illness rendered her perpetually unclean. This prevented her from chatting with her neighbors, living with her family. She couldn't live with her family members. She couldn't touch her own children. This is in the law of of Judaism. Remember, these are Jews we're talking about here. Read the Old Testament and you will see the laws. Her husband could never touch her. No one could ever touch her. Can you imagine never being touched? You couldn't hug anybody ever. She's the untouchable. She couldn't go to the synagogue and pray. Couldn't come to church. She's disconnected, isolated, shunned. She is, in other words, a social pariah. She and her family all suffer her absence. If she is cured, she would be healed and not just her, but her family, when she could, again, stroke her daughter's hair or snuggle with her grandchildren or be able to go to the market. So she wants a cure because she wants to be restored to her family. She wants healing. She wants restoration. Isn't that what you're looking for in your own life? That's what Jesus wants for you. He wants to restore you to your own sense of dignity, to feeling that you are loved and wanted and cherished, and that you are not impure or unclean, no matter the voices around you from your enemies, devilish enemies who have told you that you are unclean or impure or no good or this or that to restore you to community. Jesus says, daughter, your faith in God has healed you. He calls her daughter. It's unthinkable in Judaism for a rabbi to call her daughter. Now, if you are a daughter, it means you have a daddy. This is Jesus' response to her because she did the unthinkable. First of all, she goes to a crowd of people, a big no-no for somebody like her. So you have to go out of your way to seek healing. Mm? And she approaches a man, another big no-no, for a woman and then she touches him and not just any man but Jesus of Nazareth because she wants healing she needed a cure for her in order to bring healing to her family 
This is the problem in so many of our families. You think that it's just your own issue, but you being an alcoholic, or you being depressed, or you having this addiction or that issue, it also affects your family. Hmm? You cheating, you having marital issues, you fighting with your husband or your wife. It affects your children. I know what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to get into it right here. Today. You take care of your stuff. For the sake of your family. Because you're affecting your kids. This is all over the Bible. People needing wholeness. Needing a boost to their self-esteem. Needing restoration. You know, this is all Jesus' ministry. The Samaritan woman. You all read the Bible? The tax collectors. The Roman soldier, they don't have a physical disease, but yet each of them are social pariahs that need healing. Huh? The woman who was being stoned, the woman at the well, Jesus restores people who feel isolated, who have low self-esteem. You understand that? He gives them their dignity. In the eyes of the world, Emily, the 12-year-old girl whom I gave her first communion to on Thursday, the quadriplegic girl that you can see on my Facebook. I've posted videos and pictures. In the eyes of the world, her life has no dignity. In the eyes of the Satan-influenced world. And we see that all around. Her mother, and she told me this, and I have witnesses, when she was pregnant, they told her, end the pregnancy. Huh? You don't want a child like this. This is the devil world we live in. That's, the, that's why there's so much suicide, because that's what the devil wants you to do, because he takes away your dignity, makes you feel like you're worthless. And every single human being, no matter if they have Down syndrome or any or quadriplegic or whatever, is made in the image and likeness of God, including prisoners. Everybody, no matter our color, our creed, we all have a dignity in us. That is God-given. And she said to me, how could I do this? You know, for them it was just, you know, going in and scraping me or whatever, she says. You know, but I, that's my child. I participate in retreats for people who are hurt. in ways like this that are told over and over again. That there's something wrong with them. 
Right now, her parents are told, you need to put her in an institution. You shouldn't have her in the house because they just live in a two-bedroom house. Excuse me, apartment. It's not a house. It's an apartment. You shouldn't have her here. The state of California will throw money, you know, like we're very good at, okay? Throwing money, because that's what, you know, that's the solution, right? You know, just throw money huh? and keep her in an institution and probably kill her very fast because they'll drug her to death. Because to the state, her life doesn't mean anything. Or you should euthanize her. Huh? Euthanize is another, you know, word they invest. Like, what do they say today? Death with dignity. Uh -huh. What dignity? Huh? Take a bunch of drugs and, and kill them. That's what this devil world wants to do. And not just to Emily, but to you. Hmm? Kill her. She has no value. You're just a number. And we have internalized that. I grew up very close to Auschwitz-Birkenau. I've been there multiple times. And I go every, all, every time I go back home to Poland, I always go to that infamous concentration camp set up by the Nazis. When you walked in, they tattooed you with a number because you're just a number. You lose your identity. You're no longer a person. You're just a number. Who else is a number? 666. Six, six. Huh? But to God, we are not numbers. We have a name, don't we? Every single one of us. From conception to natural death. And no matter who is, if you're 99 years old, 120 years old, if you're a quadriplegic, you have the same dignity and you are, you are just as loved and have the same value. And if you do not meet up to our standards, the world tells you, you do not deserve to be alive. And you have internalized that. That's why you have a low self-esteem. Stop it. You know, the family went to various priests who all said, it's not important for Emily to have her first Holy Communion. She doesn't need it. She won't be able to go to communion anyway because she has a feeding tube. But the mother says to me, Father, it may not be important to these priests, but it's important to me because I am her mother. She's my daughter. And when Emily got COVID, uh-huh, she got COVID, they wanted to separate the mom from Emily because, you know, they, she couldn't be in the same place. They're like, we'll take care of her. And the mom says, over my dead body, the only way you, I'm go leaving here is dead. She refused to leave the hospital room. 
because I am her mother, and God in like manner will never leave you, ever. Never will I leave my daughter. What an image of God. I will never leave my daughter. You know, what if the one really needing healing in the gospel reading today isn't the woman with the hemorrhage? What if it's the crowd? Have you ever thought of that? Really hit me. It's the crowd that really needs to be healed. The crowd who thinks that there is something wrong with her. huh? The same crowd in our own midst that always points fingers, right? You know? You got spinal bifida, so you're, you, there's something wrong with you. You're a quadriplegic, you know. You're a drug addict, so you're not worthy. You know, you're a prisoner. We should kill you, right? Huh? You know. You're gay or lesbian or transgender, right? There's something wrong with you, huh? Isn't that what we do? We do that very well in our political discourses, turn on the TV. You're horrible because you're a Democrat. You're horrible because you're a Republican. Uh, isn't that, huh? You know, you're horrible. The crowd always pointing fingers, isn't it, huh? And we fill ourselves with the garbage. And we're always like that, aren't we, yeah? You know, what if the crowd is the one who needs healing? Because they're always pointing fingers. There's something wrong with you because you're an immigrant. Something wrong with you, right? Huh? Because you talk like that or this or that. Something wrong with you because you've been divorced or married five times. Huh? Something wrong with you because you're a woman. You know? A lot of you ladies, you've heard that many, many times throughout your life. Something wrong with you. Maybe it's the crowd who needs the healing. Our human family is ill when it believes that anyone is a social pariah. When we believe that anyone is less deserving of love or life or liberty or the right to community and the family. We, all of us, are in need of healing to believe that each and every person is made in the image and likeness of God and in that come to believe and internalize inside of ourselves that we, you, huh? me, that we too are made in that same image and likeness of God. Amen.